Hey everyone, my name is Darla Kirchner and I um, am an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for about 20 years and I love to spotlight and showcase other entrepreneurs that I feel like are really on the rise. Uh, I especially like to, to highlight my clients and my colleagues and Kendra happens to be both. So welcome to, welcome to the show, Kendra. This is Kendra Ramirez. I'm so glad you're here, honey. Thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The gurus, everybody knows the influencers. We, you and I follow the same people. And it's amazing, but they all started somewhere, right? And I know that you've been in the digital space for uh, for a few years now, and you've got a lot of experience. So I like to showcase the people that are you know, really just working the work and doing the job and just continuing to to um, serve and to, you know, to, to highlight their gifts. And you are obviously in your element. This is where you, are, you need to be, right? <laughs> Yeah. And I, I love that you said serve because I really, truly feel like that's what it is. Yes. And I know, you know, you and I are on the same. We, we've had conversations and I'm sure we'll have a lot more conversations about that. So yeah. so so tell us a little about yourself and who, and who you are so that so the audience can can get to know you a little sure. bit. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. See, skinny version all started when I was three. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I grew up in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and I um, love, love, love nature, love being out and about. That's where I get connected and uh, recharge with, with others. I started my digital journey in 2005. I was a sales manager for a Fortune 500 company and started using tools that were available back then. And it was just crazy. Uh, my peers across the country were calling and saying, what are you doing? And yeah. I just showed them what I was doing. I mean, I still to this day, I'm like, pinch me because I'm like, how am I getting paid to do this? And, you know, right. I've learned through the years that this is just my gift, that in working with other people, they don't see it as clearly as, as I do. And, and I'm grateful for, you know, listening to that little voice back in 2005 of, hey, I think you're onto something big. I think this is something right. that, you know, people can use and leverage. And I haven't looked back. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's, it's I think, you know, that is a gift. And it's also listening to your, listening to your intuition. Cause a lot of times I don't think people always do that. Um, right. It's easier just to go the route of, let's face it. It's easier to go the route of, okay, I'll just go get a job. You know? Mm -hmm. so, so we, you know, we push ourselves a little bit differently and we think a little differently. And um, I think that, you know, that helps us to be able to serve the people that we serve. So, so that's awesome. That's awesome. So, so now, um, you know, so why did you decide to be an entrepreneur? And I know you've gone, you've done a little bit of both like I have. Mm -hmm. so, so why entrepreneurism? Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I was sharing with Debbie uh, earlier. It, it's, I've never known anything different. I mean, I was an entrepreneur before I was even a word. And, and seriously, I had a lemonade stand when I was 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, we, um, the street I lived on, there was a couple open houses. There were two open houses. And I asked my parents, it was like, it, you know, it was a hot day. I was like, can I, you know, start a little lemonade stand? They're like, go for it. And so I did it, you know, all by myself, you know, 10 cents a cup, you know, really crazy. I made 13, I made $13. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> um, and I was the kid. I literally played business when I was growing up. My dad owned a real estate company and I just, I've only known business my whole life. When I was 13, I started babysitting services and I made $1,300 when I was 13 years old, started my first checking account. You know, um, yeah, I just, the entrepreneur journey is just who I am. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I, I think that's true for a lot of us, you know, and I, you know, I think the people that, because um, I feel the same way. It's like, it's, I think it's kind of in your blood and, you know, and you just mm -hmm. don't feel, you, you, this is how, this is what you know, this is where you feel like the where you fit the most. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. $1,300, <laughs> you beat me. I started babysitting when I was 11. And I don't know that I kept tabs, but <laughs> but I should have. <laughs> well, I just, you know, what's it's crazy. I still remember that, you know, because I can barely tell you what I did two days ago, but I can tell you what I did when I was 13. It was a significant for me because I remember my parents taking me to the bank and me putting, you know, starting my first checking and savings account with that money. And so that's why I remember. Right. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, so, you know, um, you know, we, we've all had, ups and downs, as you know, I mean, mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur, it's never this, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's this <laughs> and around and backwards and all that stuff. Yes. So what, you know, um, what do you think was, would be one of your most challening experiences or moments in your career? Right. Oh gosh. I know there, I know there are 
there's a few. So like trying to pick yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have challenges, right? You know, exactly. um, back when the economy, you know, crashed early on and I was like, you know, I, I hit a wall and I'm a single mom. And so I had to be responsible and, you know, jump out of being an entrepreneur. I was an entrepreneur for six years, had to take a, take a job. And I did that. And I've been, you know, was in a W2 role for, you know, four years. And now I'm back out on my own. Second time is easier. <laughs> you just yes. dust, every, dust everything off and say, all right, let's, you know, let's go for this. And because I, you know, I started interviewing and it just, it just didn't get me fired up. Um, it didn't get me excited. And it wasn't really mm -hmm. being true to myself. And so I was like, you know what? I got to do this. This is just this is just who I am. And so I'm super grateful for you know the journey because I have learned a ton, um, and <laughs> I'm very open and sharing you know pitfalls and success and you know failures because that's that's where you learn. Exactly, it is. It is exactly. Right. I'm giving you props for that because it's, <laughs> it's not always easy to. Um, I am so multitasking. I, my phone's <laughs> going off. <I'm> <laughs> so I apologize for that. <laughs> that little squirrel seconds. Like, really? I can feel like buzzing on my head. It's like, stop. <laughs> so, I so, get it. But, um, I get it. Yeah. yeah it, it's so true. It's like, I think, you know, you, 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 you know, we all go through, and that's how you learn. I think you learn from the hardest, um, the, you know, the, the hardest ones um, right. are the, are the most deepest lessons learned. Right. But mm -hmm. now, I mean, look at you. I mean, you, you knew, and that's the thing. And that, you know, that I think that's the thing is like really listening to your intuition and you are right. so good at that. So that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that story. Cause I know a lot of people are in the same boat. I mean, I know mm -hmm. for me, that was a big turn for me mm -hmm. too. That time mm -hmm. that, yeah. so, so, you know, and I used to, used to like say, you know, you, you, you know, you're, it's still, you know, why did that happen? And why did that, what could you have done differently? It couldn't have done anything differently. Right. You can't help the economy. So, right. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so now, I mean, so now, now that you, you're, you're back in the game, you're really doing it and you're, you're you are, you are hitting the ground running. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> So, so what, um, what is your sweet spot? I mean, what, you know, what do you, you know, when you're in your zone, mm -hmm. what do you love to do? Yeah. You know, I have always loved the light bulb moment. You know, the moment when we're near with a client and they're really understanding why digital is important to them or they're seeing the results of their efforts or, you know, just um, overcoming their own fears of digital Um and just, you know, helping them baby step themselves into it. You know, so I always say, you know, we got, we got to crawl before we walk. And, exactly. um, and I'm just, you know, there to, you know, be someone that they can lean on. Um, so they don't feel like they have to know everything. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, let them focus on their job and their core strength and be true to who they are. And then I'm just the wizard behind the curtain. You know, I'm just you know, <laughs> one whispering on their shoulder and like, you can do this. You can do yeah, this. And, the all um, powerful <laughs> Yeah. So, so the light bulb moment is huge for me and just focusing on the, the strategy and coaching and training. And, you know, I, I kind of always say, you know, for me, it's where digital and inspiration collide. That's for me is the the sweet spot of you know inspiring others to to do the best with their businesses. Yeah, that's a great quote. That's a great quote. I'm going to put that in a blog because I am <laughs> going to take our take our um our interview and I put it into my blog over at Darla Kirchner, and yeah. um so I I got to make sure I remember that one. I always come back through and listen to it, but that's great because it it really is yeah. the combination of the two. So, so mm -hmm. I know um, one of the things that I, maybe I need to back up a little bit. So tell us what you're doing now. So what, mm -hmm. who do you serve? Cause I know that that's an important, you know, to let yeah. people know. So who do you serve now? Yeah. So, you know, for the past, you know, almost going on 11 years, which is just nuts because it feels like just a couple of years yes, um, <laughs> is, is very much, I'd say 75% of my clientele is in the B2B space. Um, okay. And that's where I grew up and I grew up in the business development world. So the lens I'm looking through and I'm using digital is how to get results. Um, you know, I go to people like you to make them pretty and sparkly <laughs> and <laughs> um, you know, making sure we get the, you know, most out of that, that visual marketing. Um and, you know, for, for me, it's just focusing on the, the, you know, the results. And so for B2B, to, for the strategy, coaching and, and training. And I just, you know, I love holistically looking at the whole thing um, of business, business development, recruitment, customer service, 
um, employment branding, extending their marketing, um, culture, I mean, on and on and on. So uh, I have a lot of executive um, sponsorship when I'm working with companies because I like building social media teams inside of organizations. Um, it was shocking to me several years ago, a Fortune 500 company that was working with um, 30 people in the marketing team and doing a workshop with them. I said, all this beautiful work that you're doing externally, how are you getting your 10,000 employees involved? And they were like, huh? <laughs> What? And I'm like, OK, um, you know, uh, we probably need to get them, you know, understanding the on importance board. of what we're doing and on board and getting them involved. And because nothing, you know, it's just terrible when there's a massive disconnect in an organization when they appear to be a certain way externally. And then maybe you get a call or call in or uh, engage with their recruiter or business development person or customer service. And you're asking them questions about the promo or the thing that they were talking about. Um, you know, online in their digital channels. And they're like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Right. So yeah. like, there's this massive disconnect between what's happening externally and internally. And, and marrying those up is really critical. Yeah, it really is. It was a lot of times when you're in your business, and I know from a small business perspective that it's hard to look at all of that. And you're so busy working on your business that you know that you're not working in your business. And mm -hmm. you know, or you, you know, that's vice versa. You're so busy, you're so busy working in your business, keeping the day to day going that you're not working on the business to to, to make sure that yeah that the presence is consistent. And that's my big word is consistency. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. everybody and everything is the same. So so um, I think that's amazing. So so when you're so who's who's your like ideal client then? If you were to say, you know what, if I was working with, and I know you have know, talked about this, so because yeah. you know to get all your branding and stuff together. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'm very honored to be able to work on Kendra's branding and to help her with her um, with her um, visual content and and uh, you know fit stage one. So 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 if you were to talk about who your who your ideal client is, who would that be? Yeah, you know, beyond, you know, B2B, there's uh, three primary industries that I serve, and that's manufacturing, technology, and financial services. Um, I have a deep background in technology, so people don't need to have to bring me up to speed on their acronyms of, of what they're doing. Um, I love working with manufacturing and financial services. And they're just thirsty for knowledge um, and, and being able, and I love I love the mid-market. I mean, I, I've served anyone from a two-man shop to a $2 billion organization, um, wow. and I, you know, love love working with that you know that that mid market because um, you know being able to actually see things implemented um, yeah. you know and working with some of the bigger guys um, mm -hmm. it has taken months and months and months to get things implemented and by the time we're ready to implement the plan we wrote was just uh, no longer valid exactly um, you know, so. <laughs> yes, yes exactly so, so fast exactly. yeah so um, yeah mm -hmm. and they don't always they're not always as fast to move <laughs> right <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so it's, it's a, yeah, it's leaders. Um, I love working with leaders that empower employees, leaders that believe in growth. Um, those are the ones that I um, work really, really well with. Yeah, yeah, because they're on the same page. I mean, yeah. and that's that makes your job that much easier, right? It's mm -hmm. really a collaboration, and that's yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. So that's great. So um, from you know, what is you know, if you were to, if you were to think about is there an experience that you've learned from that you feel like you've just risen out of, you know, where maybe, maybe it was, you know, back in the, you know, when the recession tanked, I mean, I don't know if there was another one or is that pretty much would you consider that be, being the one, the one yeah. you like, you know what, I'm going to pick up my bootstraps. And I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that was a pretty big, you know, moment, you know, talk about being down on your knees and you're like, okay, I have $200 in my bank account right now. What am I going to do? Um, you know, and you know, what entrepreneur has not been in, you know, in that, that situation and, and, you know, um, you know, you have to have to figure out what's you know right for you. You know, personally, I, I personally don't have debt, don't want to have debt. And I wasn't willing to do that at that time. Um, right. And right. so just being smart, you know, about about the business. Um, yeah, but, you know, you know I totally agree with you. And I think, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people just, you know, they go in and they stay blind and you can't do that. You have to live and you have to be smart about it too. So mm -hmm. there's no, I mean, I applaud you for that. I mean, really I do. I mean, I've had to do the same thing and, mm -hmm. and you just, you do what you have to do, but you know where your love is and now look where you are. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's something to be very proud of. And thanks for sharing mm -hmm. that. 
Really? Yeah. Really? You know, I would love to share just a quick, you know, um, a mentor of mine said, you know, go back and write, you know, over the past 20 years, just one thing that you had to overcome. And by overcoming that, what good happened from it? And it was a great exercise. And it didn't take me, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes to, you know, plow through that. And again, back to, I don't remember what I did two days ago, let alone, you know, right. 20 years ago. <laughs> So, you know, I just pulled up my LinkedIn account and started going back through, you know, past jobs and where's, you know, there have been layoffs. And and what's amazing is every single thing where there was a downturn, something even better came out of it, a better job, a better situation. Um, and so it's sometimes good to, you know, reflect on those things and understand that um, we've overcome a lot in our lives and we should be really proud of that. Exactly. Exactly. I don't think we give ourselves a lot of credit. Yeah, and especially you know, with, I don't know. I feel like in the entrepreneur mindset, it's it's like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I think that has a lot to do with it. So we don't give ourselves enough mm -hmm. enough credit. So yeah. I, you know, thank you for sharing that because yeah. I think you do need to go back and just and just and and you know relish the relish those accomplishments, however small you think that they are. I mean, right. they've gotten you where you are today. That's mm -hmm. something that I've learned. Is um, you know, I used to think, oh gosh, if I just had that crystal ball to know where I'm supposed yes. to be. You no, know, I'm on this journey, right? The journey mm -hmm. is the journey. And yeah. I let that go. And it was hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I let it go. So so yes. thanks for sharing. That. <laughs> um yes. so okay, so you know, um, you know, we're you know, we're both great big readers. Mm -hmm. Love to read. Yes. And so so is there a great book that you um, that you would share? Because I, I like I'm actually keeping a tab on one of my blogs and I, I'm trying to add the yeah. the um add them to the list. So is there a great book or a couple that you'd like to share? Oh my goodness. Love books. Um, yeah. you know, I, I can't get enough, you know, from a learning standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. the, I'd say, you know, definitely for business owners and entrepreneurs, E-Myth Revisited. Um, I've reread that multiple times. That's a oh, fantastic book. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And it's it's about, you know, telling the story of, you know, you, you're starting your business out of your passion, but there's other aspects of the business that you need to know and may not be a strength of yours and right. making sure to lean on others that do have those strengths. And I have never been shy about asking for help. I have multiple members um, that I go to for, for business mentorship, uh, business advisors. I've vetted my business plan with three different people. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, and um, so E-Myth Revisited, um, um, the other one is by Todd Henry, a louder than words. And it's another fantastic, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, and it's really talks about the narratives that we tell ourselves um, mm -hmm. and the daily things that we need to do to feed ourselves. Um, and I just, it's a, just a fantastic book um, that, you know, I know that I will reread, um, you know, as well. And then I would say the other one is um, by Andy Andrews. He's another author that I like, and it's called The Noticer. Um, and again, it's just bringing a different aspect to conversations that are happening or relationships or things that, you know, the noticer is seeing that we don't see for ourselves. And those are probably my top three books that, you know, I'm really in love with in the past, you know, few, few months. And you ask me again next month, it'll be something else. <laughs> <laughs> those are great books. Now, I actually have yep. an email and I haven't, I, I started it and then I started another book and I, I need to go back to it. Um, yeah. and then Shocker. <laughs> I know, I know, bad. <laughs> but I, I've also, I mean, I've heard wonderful things about um, Louder Than Words. I've heard wonderful mm -hmm. things about him yeah. as an author. Yeah. And I love the fact that he's a Cincinnati guy. Yes. Yay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think I'm on his email list and I need to, is that the, is that his most recent book? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. it is? Okay. Okay. So yeah. then another friend of mine referred that to me. So I will add mm -hmm. that to my list. Thank you. And I'll make sure I put yeah. all this in our um in our show notes too so um so you know i know that you have invested in yourself you know you've invested mm -hmm. like you said you you talk to other people you know like you know you can't that's the one thing i think as entrepreneurs especially when you're starting out you got this diy mindset mm -hmm. and and you can only have that diy mindset for so long right because you can't do it all really well mm -hmm. so i know that you have you have a great network of colleagues and and people that you partner mm -hmm. with and um, and I, so I really appreciate that you came to me for your branding because, you know, you, you know, I wanted to make sure I'm spotlighting you in your best, you know, in your best, mm -hmm. um, best view. So, so, you know, when it comes to branding, what do you think is, um, um, why do you feel investing in building your brand is so important? Why did you do that? Yeah. You know, because, uh, <laughs> but, 
<laughs> because obviously, like, you know, that's not my gift to regards to, you know, doing design work. And you are super talented at that. And it was so fun to work with you through the project because it was so much more than just colors. Um, yes. you know, and you did a fantastic job of digging in to really understand what is my vision for myself, my mission, my why. Um, and I love the fact that you, you really dug in and then also applied, you know, the business strategy to what I'm trying to achieve for myself as well. And so um, I couldn't think of anything better than to reach out to you and have you, you know, help me do that. And branding is huge. And it's, it's not just online branding, it's offline branding as well. Um, another friend of mine we were talking recently is, you know, you have to be, you know, you at all times in the, the best version of yourself because one little slip up, he was telling the story. He was at a dog park and this other dog, like, you know, uh, started a fight with his dog. And he's like, you know, get your dog on my dog and just, you know, had a, uh, you know, a little altercation, you know, with this other person. Well, come to find out months later, this was going to be this guy you know, that had this dog that attacked his dog um, uh, was coming to his company for work. Well, he um, ended up not getting the work because he had some very uh, distinctive words he used when his dog was being attacked. Um, and so it's just one of those things that, you know, it's online and offline you know, from a branding standpoint, and you can't be one way online and a different way offline. I mean, you, right. you just, you have to have to be true to yourself in all aspects. Um, Cause you, you never know who's watching and you never know who's watching. Yeah, and, right. um, you know, I had someone, you know, mention to me, they're like, yeah, I think I saw you, you know, one day, you know, someone I you know didn't know. And we ended up, you know, connecting, you know, online and they're like, yeah, I think I saw you one day at, you know, such a, such a bagel shop or, you know, whatever. And, you know, I was like, well, why didn't you say hi? <laughs> um, you know, and so, you know, luckily, you know, um, I, it was a good experience and, um, you know, right. she's like, oh, you know, I wanted to, but I just didn't want to interrupt your day. And, you know, I'm like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm, I'm somebody like I'd, I've never met a stranger. And my mom would even tell you my first word was hi. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. That. yeah. So I love meeting people. So don't be shy. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, I think you hit on some really great valid points. You know, for me, it's like, you know, branding is the essence of who you are and so it goes it starts within and goes all the way out and so it is a, it is a complete thing um and a lot of people don't realize that and so when you say something or you are so, somewhere you know that reflects on you you know whether you are a personal brand or you are a business brand it's the same thing so it's the same um, mm -hmm. it is it yeah. is and I think Angel props 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah, that's that's the thing that, um, um, yeah, and a lot of people don't necessarily always, you know, get that. And they think of branding, like you said, they think of it as, mm -hmm. uh, as your logo and as your colors and maybe your tagline. So and more. they get so hung up on that. And it's right. not just that. I mean, mm -hmm. that's where I started. That's why I love, you know, strategizing about it because it's it's more than just uh, the appearance of what you uh, of what you think it is. It is really right. who you are. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that makes thanks for sharing the story about about the about the the dog story. That's I might carry that on because it really Yeah. That's a lot. It really does. Mm -hmm. So yeah, props for that one. That's awesome. <laughs> if you guys if, while we're while we're talking you guys, um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the to the um uh, section here. Vicky's being so gracious to kind of help monitor. I really appreciate that cuz Vicky's Vicky's awesome. Thank you, Vicky. Yes, she is. She's awesome. She's yes, so good. Yes. Exactly. So um um, so what, you know, what do you, when you're talking about talking about the difference between online and offline, and since your focus is really helping businesses and entrepreneurs um, grow online in the social arena, you know, where do you feel like, you know, what's your favorite way to build um, or what would you suggest they start to build um, their brand awareness online? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, you know, I, I always start with just um, a, a baseline. Right. So I start with an assessment and it can't be just of them. It has to be of them and their top competitors. You know, so I usually grab three to five competitors because you can't make decisions off of one data point. And so it's really critical. So I start with the baseline. I do an analysis of um, anything where their brand is being touched you know, on the Internet. Um, so tripping over any assets that they may even didn't even realize they had. So I'm, um, I don't don't even click on just their like social channels that they have listed on their website. I Google them as if I'm just Jane Doe Googling them and what am I going to find, you know, in regards to them. And, and I document all of that. And then along with the social channels, but anything that's touching, you know, the internet and looking at their core messaging, looking at inbound, um, 
looking at, you know, um, their SEO, um, are they mobile optimized? I mean, just really digging in because um, you have to start there to and then finding those gaps of where do we want to be and how are we going to get there? Um, so that's really the the big is um, and a lot of businesses just haven't taken the time to do that. It is time consuming. I don't have software that does that. Um, I do that. You <laughs> no know, my, yeah, no magic. <laughs> no. Yeah. A good friend of mine. She's like, yeah, what you do is, you know, unicorns and, and uh, rainbows. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but, you know, yeah. really digging in and making sure they have a very clear objective of why are they wanting to do this? Um, mm -hmm. There's lots and lots of planning involved. You know, OK, what's the next 30 days of content going to look like? Where's the distribution points? You know, what's the goal? What's the emotion that we want to evoke, you know, with our content? Yeah. You know, so many times I, I'm working with businesses, they're just they're just plowing through and checking boxes. They're like, all right, I got three blog posts out this you know week or this month. And, you know, really um, just not not getting in producing the, the effort. And so I always say I'd rather have good quality than quantity, you know, from a content standpoint um, of making sure it's something that's really resonating and comes from the heart. And that's hard to do. I get, you know, especially for guys, they're like, oh, don't make me talk about feelings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> don't make me go there. Don't want to go um, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, how do you bring the emotion into the business? And and emotion can mean many things. It's not always crying. It can be laughter. It can yeah. be thinking. You know, exactly. can you you know get your your clientele to be thinking differently and 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 taking it to a different different level? Yeah. Um, so I, I know I just threw a whole lot out there, but you know, yeah, back I to eighty eat, you know squirrel. <laughs> but that's that's kind of where where I start when I'm digging in. But it, everything I do has to tie back to the overarching business strategy of the company. Right, right. And so and that's that's very smart to do. And a lot of people don't necessarily take the time to do that. So you got so if you are a, a small business, I would highly or, or a medium sized business or any business, I would highly encourage you to talk to Kendra because she is great at what she does. And I think that that's a, a lot of people, you know, they need to understand that because there's like, it's, again, it goes back to, you know, are they always working in their business that they're not working mm -hmm. on it? Because right. you, I've had people that have had friends that have had big accounts and and when that big account stops then they're stuck mm -hmm. and they're wondering yeah. oh gosh now what so right but I, you know i love the fact that we talked about you know, about finding their voice because that is part yeah. of the brand too yes. is knowing what their voice is and so opening mm -hmm. up more and more um especially in this day and age because you know there's so many people out there you have to differentiate so how you find your voice and you you put it right. out there that people realize that you are another human and that mm -hmm. you know humanizing it, it yes. will really help you too. So that that's great. So um so then what what keeps you motivated, Miss Kendra? What's your big why? <laughs> <laughs> and not really oh. deep, but I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. Um my big why, you know, for me, especially from a digital perspective is, and you've heard me say this before, it burns me up when other digital consultants take advantage of customers. Uh, just, it makes me sick. And so that, that's kind of a very much a driving, you know, factor for me because I've played cleanup behind, you know, other, other folks. Um, yeah, you know, I can't tell you how many stories I've run into where, you know, one customer spent nine grand, you know, with a, a digital consultant and got nothing to show for it or another wow. one, you know, $53,000 and have nothing to show for it. Um, and it just, you know, that, you know, but from a just driving factor is um, just serving, you know, and, and helping people just be really successful in their businesses and showing that there, there is a way, um, that, you know, to, to do it and that, you know, I'm going to be there and be their biggest cheerleader, um, you know, through, through the whole thing and making sure that, you know, and showing them that they can do this. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can. That's awesome. Yep. You know, and I think a lot of people just, you know, just being, you know, sharing that. It mm -hmm. I think it helps people understand, um, you know, you know, what the kind of person that you are, and mm -hmm. that that says a lot. So yeah. So thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. And, um, so then, um, one of the things I know you've you've shared a lot. And you've given us some tips and stuff. So I wanted to ask you: are, are there any other expert tips that you would share for, like, say, someone starting out and they're in mm -hmm. there? They're online now and they're just trying to figure it out. You know, where, you know, are there a couple of tips that you would share that say, hey, you know, try this or do this, maybe one or two? Yeah. Um, you know, back to, you know, where we said earlier, it's just being human, being true to yourself, um, staying in your lane. 
I would say the number one mistake I see in businesses is they trying to be all things to all people. Stay Press in your that. lane, and then yeah. um, and then find partners that you know supplement that. Right? You know, you can't do all things there is. You know, and and surround yourself by people that complement the services you know that you have to come you know to offer. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I don't know how to do that. Right? Exactly. Um, and then reaching out and finding you know talented people to to support that. But um, you know, it's going to get even more critical that we get really focused in on who we are, who we serve, how we serve to differentiate ourselves. Um, we can't just generically, you know, speak anymore. It just isn't going to get us anywhere from a, a business standpoint. And um, there's so many times when I am doing a digital assessment, you know, um, as a part of strategy and coaching for a company. And I'm looking at their site and I'm overwhelmed with all the offerings and everything they're doing, you know, um, right. finding those niche pieces um, and really honing in on those niche. Now, and even for myself, when I wrote my business plan, I wrote it, you know, way out here. Can I do all those things? Yes. But at the same time, um, you know, reeling it back into what are the three core things that you want to do and really, really own? Can you do the other things? Yes. But out of the gates, you know, those core messaging. Um, and if you trip over the other opportunities, then that's fine. But being really intentional about um, who you are and what, what you're trying to achieve. I mean, I, I'd say and it's crazy and it doesn't matter the size of company. I run into it all over the place. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great tips. Great tips. And I think, I, I think, like you said, it doesn't matter. I, it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I think the size, it doesn't matter where you are. As long as you need to reassess. Right. Too. So if you've been in yeah. the business, you need to make sure you reassess where you are and, and, mm -hmm. and focus, focus. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah, big difference. So yeah. um, I, I know that, uh, okay, so this is, the, this is what I wanted to, this is kind of a fun question. And some people go, Oh gosh, Darla, you're gonna make me think or go deep, but you know, so I'm gonna share this because it's kind of a fun question. So um, let's pretend that you're gonna that you're you that you can travel back in time, mm -hmm. and uh, you with the knowledge that you have now, you know everything you know now. What would you tell your younger self? Yeah, you know, and I I love this because I actually wrote a, a dear me letter um, mm -hmm. sometime last year. It's on it's on my blog. And, and it was to me back in college, because in college, I you know wanted a business degree because that's all I've ever known my whole life is business and it's my passion. But I was really frustrated in college because I had friends that were like, oh, I'm going in pharmaceutical sales. I'm going to be a photographer. I'm going to be a teacher. Like they had a real clear vision of what exactly they were going to do. I'm like, OK, I just know business, but I don't know what that looks like. Right. And, right. and actually gave a, a keynote at a university about this very topic. And I said, you know, what's really cool is what I do for a living now didn't exist when I graduate college. You know, so I was really trying <laughs> right. to encourage them that, hey, who knows, right? Who knows what's going to happen, you know, um, as things evolve and technologies evolve. I mean, there's more innovation happening now than there ever has been. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, the cool thing that you know, I wrote to myself was just saying that, you know, it all turns out better than I could have ever imagined. And, mm -hmm. you know, just being able to just, you know, keep going and keep growing and evolving. I've always been just a curious person and um, love to learn. And mm -hmm. so always, you know, playing with stuff and, th and, and getting uncomfortable. You have to get yeah. comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it, it was a fun little exercise I did when I wrote to myself um, through the Dear Me campaign. And it was um, just, man, has it turned out, I could have never ever envisioned for myself in college that I'd be doing what I'm doing now. Yeah, I know. I know. Isn't it amazing? Cause it's like, wow, yeah. but that's a great way of doing it. And I, I think I love the whole dear me. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and I want, I'll have to, you have to give me that blog post so I can stick it into the thing too. Cause I think that would be great for the people to, okay. to you know, get a better, you know, an understanding of what maybe they could do the same thing. Mm -hmm. so that's great. Um, so I keep getting calls. I apologize. Um, so <laughs> You're popular. I, yeah, I'm like, really? <laughs> People know I'm busy? <laughs> oh. What's next for you? What are you working on now? What big projects are you working on right now? Or anything that you've got on the horizon that you want to you want to share with us? Oh, um, gosh. Um, you know, we're going to be able to highlight you this time next Thursday. So mm -hmm. I'm super excited about that and telling your story and um, all the you know, things that, you know, we've got to do in 2016, you know, for, for branding. So I'm excited about that. And big plans. Um, yes, big plans. Cause we're, we're going to think big this year. 
It's white tape on it. <laughs> and then um, I'm speaking at Apple on February 4th. So I'm very much looking forward to that. That's always a really fun event. Um, the last event we did in November, we had 125 people come and it was just so much fun. Yeah. And it was just like such a wonderful group of, you know, um, all, you know, all across the board from solopreneurs up to, you know, some pretty large organizations. And I just I love, you know, working with, you know, those those teams and really um, just pushing everybody to, you know, that it's that it, you can do this and right. um, and that you right. can, you know, bake, take those those steps. And it's it's just making sure and taking the steps and not letting fear, you know, stop you. Stop you. Well, I think I think you're right when you talk about, um, you know, uh, stepping out, stepping outside your comfort zone. There's a quote that I love. It's um, the magic happens outside your comfort zone, and mm -hmm. we know that to be true, right? So, yes. um, so speaking of quotes, you know me, I'm a quote girl too. So, yes. you happen to have a quote that you would like to share with us? Because I'm going to add that as well. Make it all pretty and branded. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do that. Yeah. I got to make it pretty. Yeah. Gosh, and it's and that was so hard because I I'm a quote girl too. I read you know a lot, and I'm always pulling you know different different quotes and and right. have them even hanging up in my office. But I think the one that I come back to, um, you know, from a quote for you know my just like business life, I would say it's just you know live, learn, and pass it on. And I don't know who said it, so it I have no idea where you know, where I picked that up. But um, years ago, I, you know, wrote that down. And, and that's just my, my, the way I view life is, yeah, live and learn and then pass it on. Anything that I learn, I try to share with other people. Um, you know, that, you know, we're, we're, it takes a village to be successful. And if you yeah. think you got it all figured out, you know, more power to you. But, um, <laughs> you know, we, we all need as much help as we can, you know, can get. And so, so yeah, live, love and, um, you know, uh, and live, learn and pass it on, pass it on. Yeah, that's a great quote. I don't know how I haven't heard that quote, but I love that quote because I kind of feel I feel the same way. It's like because, you know, I, we're, we're very kindred in that. Yes. In that very. Arena, loving to to learn and to, you know, to, you know, to pass it on is really important. So that's a great mm -hmm. quote. That's a great quote. Thanks for sharing. That's great. Yeah, I'd love to give credit, but I have no idea where I read it. I mean, because uh, I've had it for a long, long, long time um, okay. in, in my office and I don't. I don't don't know where it came from. Sometimes, it, sometimes the best the best quotes are the people that says unknown. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it could be from that mm -hmm. from unknown. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right. So, um, so one of the things I have to ask you, you know, how can we reach you? I mean, if you want to put it into the, you know, let us know how we can reach them. Of course, I'm going to make this into a blog post, everyone, so that okay. you guys know that. Um, so, and then you, you'll be able to catch it and I'll have all of her contact information in the blog post and stuff too. But in the meantime, why don't you go ahead and put it in here? Cause that, cause I, I okay. think you're, you're, um, I'm working on your blog to add it to, I think it'll come out next week get all the stuff together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm excited. So sometimes I pre-record them and they might not come out for a couple months. Depends on, 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 on our situation and what's working mm -hmm. best for us. Um, cause right. I really want to spotlight you. So, um, yeah, so there's Kendra's, there's Kendra's, um, website and go check it out. She is amazing. Um, she does amazing work and she's great. She is amazing at what she does. She just is. Aww. So yeah. And you know, and I think, you know, I love, I love surrounding myself around people that, um, lift me up and challenge me and um, have the same values and morals and ethics. And you're one mm -hmm. of them. So I'm just so blessed to have gotten to reconnect with you because we connected, uh, you know, years ago um, when you yeah. were about, you know, training LinkedIn and Kendra is amazing at LinkedIn. So um, she's amazing at all, anything online, yeah. all social media and, and how to connect all the back end stuff. So, but, um, but I'm so grateful that we got to reconnect. So thank you so much. Oh. For coming on with me. Oh, thank Here. you. Yeah, I um couldn't, you know, couldn't get through all of this without, you know, you and Vicky and Debbie and our little mastermind group and um just so so grateful by the, you know, the people that, you know, surrounded and just I mean, um, be surrounded by just so much talent. So much talent. Yeah. I mean, that that would be something that I would say too as far as, you know, for our audience here is surround yeah. yourself with good quality yeah. people. Don't be afraid yeah. to ask because that's how it started with us. And we, you and I reconnected and said, we have to stay connected. And how can we do this? And mm -hmm. we start talking about masterminds and masterminds mm -hmm. are a very powerful tool. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. highly suggest that you, you know, do that. And, um, and, uh, and don't be shy. Step outside, ask people, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And it doesn't, you know, I encourage any business to set up their own mastermind. You don't have to go, you know, um, you know, pay for that, especially as you're, you know, getting started in your business is, you know, find a you know, group of folks that, you know, you really can encourage each other and you've got different skill sets so you can lean on each other um, and come from the same, you know, values and mission for their, their life. And, and it's amazing what you're able to accomplish when you really lean on and, and have that accountability. You know, right. and I know in our masterminds, it's, you know, fantastic of, you know, what went well this week, you know, where can, where can we help each other? And um, yeah. I encourage, you know, people to, to set those, those groups up for themselves. You don't have to go, um, you know, find anything, just, you know, finding people that, you know, you believe in. And, you know, it's like, you know, um, if I'm going to go look for a financial planner, I'm going to go look for one that lives in a big house and a drive size car, right? You know, you're, you're not going to go, you know, find someone that, you know, is driving a Yugo as a financial planner, right? So, exactly. um, you know, exactly. <laughs> finding, you know, people that have, have done it and done it better um, mm -hmm. and that they, you know, have success in their, their life so you can mirror that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and mm -hmm. and start small. You're a mastermind can yes. be one other person. It's somebody to yep. hold you accountable. That's you know yes. a lot of it because you know you're working on your own. You know most mm -hmm. of us are solopreneurs and or we have a small mm -hmm. team, and so start just you know finding you know maybe one other person like you said earlier on in our and when we were talking, which I totally I totally agree and say the same thing. It's baby steps. Yeah. You gotta you gotta crawl before you can walk. You gotta crawl, <laughs> walk before you can run. <laughs> so. Yes. And a lot of people think that because of, you know, because they see all the shiny, the shiny mm -hmm. spotlights of all the big guys that I want to be there. Well, you have to, right. get, it's not going right. to happen overnight. So. Yeah. Well, and that's what I think, you know, Gary V, you know, talks a lot about that, that there is no such thing as overnight success. And and he, you know, his story is a, is amazing as well, where you know, he goes on and on, you know, for years and years and years, he had like, you know, no views on his YouTube channel. He had no one looking at his wine library yet, you know, um, and he just, um, but it took him, you know, all that time to, you know, get where he is. And so I always love hearing, you know, his story as, as well. And he's fun to, fun to follow. Yeah, he is fun to follow. So I'll, I'll, I'll add that in there too. So I have not read his last book. Um, Jab, Jab. Yeah, I haven't. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't read that one yet either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people start by it. Thank you, Vicky. Vicky put him. Yeah, he is. He's. Yeah, he's. He's. He, he seems very. He's very authentic. Very. And I think mm -hmm. that's what I. That's what I think a lot of people resonate with. And so, so if you're thinking about, you know, oh, I don't want to get all mushy and 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 stuff. Mm -hmm. He shares. He's very authentic. Yeah. I think that might be somebody, you know, if you're a guy, he's a guy's guy. He's a guy's guy for sure. Guy's guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I want to see if anybody has any questions because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and um, unless anybody has any questions, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording so we can chat for a minute. Um, but if you've got a quick question you want to ask Kendra, now's the time to ask Kendra and I can unlock this. Um, if somebody wants to hop in the seat, because this is this is the time. Because I'm trying to keep keep. Um, I know your time is very valuable, and she's she's a busy lady. So, <laughs> so if you've got a quick question for Kendra, talking about you know her journey or talking about her expertise, um, now's the time to ask. So, don't be shy. <laughs> we, we, I always say this. They're, 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 yeah, say they're, they're at home in their pajamas. They don't. You know, yes, they're they're home still, in their pajamas. They don't want to get on. Bedhead. <laughs> that, that's so like, Yeah, you can submit questions in the, the chat if you don't want to take a seat. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. So thank you so much for coming on with me, thank Kendra. You. Really appreciate it. And then we'll just continue chatting okay. for. Okay. Thank you.